Well, boom, baby. Happy Saturday to you. I hope you are having a great Saturday and a great holiday weekend. Hey, it's the 4th of July, baby. So I hope you are having a great holiday weekend. My name is Don Terrell, and I want to welcome you to another amazing episode of The Color of Motion. I like to say, hey, stories come in all shades. And I highlight people of color and diverse backgrounds in the industry of motion graphics, animation, visual effects, cartoons, and comics. This space that I'm just ecstatically, ecstatically crazy about. You know the drill. Hop on into the comments, say, hey, let me know where you're tuning in from so I can give you a shout out. Um, like I said, I hope you are super excited about this episode because I've been looking forward to it for a long while, ever since uh, me and my next guest connected and started a great friendship there. Mr. Kenny D. Wow, that is really big there. <laughs> Mr. Kenny D., I appreciate you uh, tuning in, as always, for sure. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show as well. Again, make sure that you hop into the comments. I want this, uh, you know, like I said, interactive. It's, it's an interactive show. So I want you to engage and be a part of it. Like I said, we're season two has been going amazingly well. And we got big things planned, of uh, course, for the color of motion. I'm always saying that for sure. Make sure that uh, you get connected with us. Hop on over to the Facebook group community. Get plugged in. Facebook.com slash group slash the color of motion. Get plugged in. Be a part of the conversation. We share industry news and just try and be a benefit as much as we can like i said you'll uh really enjoy it it's growing and i cannot uh stress it enough for sure mr downtown demille appreciate you uh as always brother check it in and being a part of the show miss brianna another uh faithful viewer as well appreciate you tuning in like i said i hope you are having a great uh, and safe 4th of July holiday weekend, uh, for sure. Uh, as always, like I said, you can uh, connect with me. I definitely want to hear from you on all my social channels here. You can find me. Uh, let me hear from you. Let me know what you think of the show, anything you might want me to try, any guests you may want me to try and get on, uh, but definitely want to hear from my viewers um, as always, for sure. Uh, like I said, we stream live every week, uh, Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. to LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook pages and groups. But I do always recommend people hop on over to the YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you get notified of when great new content comes up. Um, and you could also check out all the other past great episodes and friends that I've had on so far. Um, so hop on over there, youtube.com slash Don Terrell and subscribe for sure. What else? Man, uh, like I said, a lot of stuff's been going on. Oh, I want to, uh, like I said, give a shout out to... Uh, our sponsor here, longtime sponsor, DG Graphics. We appreciate them. They do all the graphics, overlays, animations that make the show look amazing. And if you are a business or a brand that's looking to level up or start your own live stream show, definitely reach out to them. They can help you with that and make you look good as they make us look good. So appreciate that. Uh, a LinkedIn user uh, greetings. Wow. Trinidad and Tobago. Appreciate that. First time here. Looking forward to the session. Uh, thank you for joining us from all in the islands, Trinidad. I went there on vacation. I love Trinidad. Um, me and some family did some cruising over there. So we had a lot of fun, uh, for sure. Uh, what else? Man, I feel like I'm missing something for sure, but, uh, can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, again, uh, like I said, make sure that you support uh, the channel. Oh, that's it. Uh, like I said, we are always working. A couple of things now that I'm thinking about it. We're always working to, uh, like I said, level up the show. And if you're one of those ones that would love to support us, you know, in any way that you can, hey, I love a great cup of coffee. Buymeacoffee.com slash Don Terrell. You know, you can donate whatever you, you know, so feel desire to do. We have a membership over there where we put uh, targeted content, private content for the members there. You can join for uh, $5 a month or $50 for the year. Definitely help for us to continue to make great content and keep uh, bringing great guests on to you uh, for sure. Also, another big thing, <clears throat> time is running down. You have uh, about a little less than a week, Thursday. Uh, our contest is going to be ending. Our great giveaway that we are doing with our new sponsor, Toon Boom Animation, um, where you can have a chance to get your hands on a one-year subscription to either their amazing software, Harmony 21, or Storyboard Pro. Like I said, uh, they're partnering with us and giving us a couple of licenses to give away, and I definitely want to give them out. Um, so Thursday, midnight Central Standard Time is when it officially ends, and I'm going to be announcing uh, the two winners uh, on Saturday's episode, so you definitely want to make sure that you get into the contest. Hop on over to either my LinkedIn, team, LinkedIn page or the Facebook group and page, and you can check out the video that I've been sharing where it lists uh, the three things that you kind of need to do to get into uh, the giveaway. But there's still time to do it for sure. Mr. Dre just got done watching a great episode uh, with him. Uh, Jade Seabury, Deborah Anderson on her Black Women Woman Animator podcast and J. Aaron Merchant. They had an amazing, amazing show. You definitely want to make sure that you uh, plug into Deborah Anderson's woman, Black Woman Animator podcast series. She has some great super guests on there as well. Uh, so definitely want to give a shout out to that. Like I said, it was a, it was a great talk. Um, so I appreciate you stopping by there, Dre, and checking out the show. Mr. Wayne Carnegie as well. Always a pleasure, brother, uh, supporting the show. I appreciate that for sure. And Miss Leontine, appreciate you stopping by. Hello, hello. Another uh, faithful viewer, thank you. Thank you for supporting the show. Like I said, we are getting ready to dive into this episode and have some fun. I know I've been looking forward to it, so... With that, and without further ado, let's get this show on the road. My next guest received training at Walt Disney Feature Animation in Orlando, Florida. He is currently developing a few animated series through his animation com company, Gumbo Yo. And some of his studio credits include character designer on The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder. I know that's big right now. A lot of people are really loving that series. Uh, for Disney+, Plus, Marvel Animation character artist on Avengers, Black Panther's Quest, and Avengers Ensemble animated series. Co-director of Marvel's Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated shorts. Art director for Mattel's Monster High web series. He was also an instructor at Otis College of Art and Design in Los Angeles, California, and College of Creative Studios in Detroit, Michigan. Everybody, please help me welcome my very special guest and friend, Mr. Laren Dijonet. Hey. Yeah, yeah, and he's come decked out for this episode. I, I was telling him earlier, I felt like I needed to get my Kango on. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have tons of like, uh, 
tango hats and shirts that match. So <laughs> I figure, you know, it's it's a, it's a nice sunny sunny day where I'm at. So I wanted to be sunshine today. <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it. And I was telling him uh, before the show, I had a cousin that was the same way. He loved tangos. And he was always matching his tango with his shirts. No matter what color it was, he had a tango for it. So it's just, you got to love a good tango. Yeah, yeah, you can't, it can't go wrong with this. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, uh, uh, what, what is, uh, uh, I have to coordinate, you know. <laughs> coordinate, you got to coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> I love that pop. that boomerang more with I tell you, you got to coordinate. Great, <laughs> great John Witherspoon. Yeah. Oh man, love them, love them for sure. Oh man, like I said, uh, Larry, you know, I've been super excited about getting you on the show ever since uh, one. I first saw your work, and then oh. two, we connected uh, on LinkedIn, and just. Like I said, always super amazed at what you've been doing. And and you guys are going to, we're going to show uh, some of his work in a few, but like I said, you'll just be blown away at uh, the work that he's done and what he's doing. And like I said, can't thank you enough for just being on the show. Oh, thanks, man. I, I am, I am excited. And um, like, uh, you know, this is one of the things that I like doing as well. You know, it's uh, uh, great to, to talk about what I do and also great to, uh, meet and network and you know hopefully people watching this will will be inspired just how i'm inspired when i look at artwork online and yeah. see things on social media and watch you know your shows and shows that are like this yeah yeah for sure and we were kind of talking a little bit about this you know before the episode um you've been in the industry quite a while you know like i said um you know, I don't want to, you know, you look really young for your age. You know, you know like I said, you're about my age. I may be a few years older, but, you know, uh, you've been in the industry a while. Um, what was it that, I mean, and I tell people the reason I started this show um, and really got behind and wanted to do The Color of Motion was because when I got interested in comics and cartoons, I really didn't see characters that looked like me or creators that looked like me. What was it for you that kind of inspired you when you were younger that this was something that, you know, you really wanted to do and, you know, could do it? Well, you know, when I was a kid, I, I always loved drawing. You know, it, it was one of those things that was, I would say, innate uh, when I was, you know, a little kid, three years old, and I used to draw lots of things. And, uh, you know, I've said this in the past, but I, I, would, I would credit my parents, to be honest, for, for kind of putting that 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 uh, uh, nurturing and, and sort of cultivating it. Um, one of the things that they noticed is that, uh, and this is what my mom told me, because I was like three years old, so I really couldn't remember it, but... Um, my mom saw some pictures that I did of like Mickey Mouse and Bozo the Clown was kind of big when I yeah. was young. Um, and she noticed that there was like lots of detail in the drawings from my age. And so she asked me, she's like, Hey, you know, where'd you copy this from? And I told her, you know, I just, I drew it out my mind. And that was one of the things that she noticed that I was able to like watch something on TV or see something, you know, outside or in a magazine and then recreate it and add lots of detail. Again, you know, I'm a young age, but she picked up on that. And yeah. so they enrolled me in, uh, in art classes, youth art classes, like when I was, uh, I want to say probably in like fifth or sixth grade, I took like some youth art classes. And from there, you know, I started learning uh, basic skills as far as like fine art type. It was it was mainly like a fine arts class yeah. where we did still life and things like that. but. I always had a desire, even like I said, when I was a little kid, I used to draw like cartoons and Mickey Mouse and Spider-Man. Cartoons and, and comic book superheroes were like things that I gravitated towards. And when my parents like cultivated that thing and put me in these the art youth art classes, and uh, when I was four years old, my, my dad bought me an easel. Yeah. <laughs> and it was one of those things where, you know, growing up, I had young kid friends and they would get like video games or this experience. <laughs> And, you know, my parents, you know, they couldn't buy me everything. So, yes, I, I couldn't get those those expensive video games or toys all the time. But if, it, if there was something that was like art related and yeah. 
really like they saw that I really wanted it, then they would do whatever they could. You know, if, if, yeah. if it was a marker set, maybe we got two markers at a time to form, form, uh, form a set. Yeah. But um, I always credit them because they saw it. They saw it early on and they cultivated it and and they they did whatever they can do in order to make sure I had like like real things like they bought me like real pastels or yeah. real markers yeah. and paints and real like watercolors not just things for crafts that were yeah not truly authentic but yeah, yeah they wanted to make sure I had those those uh things growing up and um reading comic books too as I got older and I read comics um those were things that inspired me and and viewing like the animations and reading comic books uh, those, my mind was always visual, you know, it's like, I, I will read a comic and even though the artwork was drawn on the page, I would still visually see it in my head as being like an animation or a movie and things like that. And because I really, really liked to draw a lot, you know, that was what pushed me more to illustration and animation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's so, so important. You know, my mom was kind of the same way, you know, you know, they know she noticed that, okay, you're, you're drawing, but your drawing's not like typical, like little kid drawing. It's got some real detail to it and really foster. I think that's so important to have somebody that really fosters and feeds into your passion that really allows you to visualize, wow, this is something you know, I can really do, you know, and, and really have the passion for doing. Um, because, it, like I said, it does really help so, so much um, the mind of a child that sees that, you know, their parents or just someone that they respect really believe in the talent that they have. Yeah, and, it, and it, you know, I, I guess it, it, in some respect, you know, I, I, again, I was a kid, so I did kid things, but it it kept, it kept me out of some trouble, <laughs> you know, uh, for me, one big thing that my, I tell you, my mom, she was just, man, she was just really just thinking, yeah. uh, for a summer vacation, you know, as a kid, summer vacation felt like, you know, years, <laughs> you know, that time <laughs> off the of school felt like it was an eternity, but what she would do is, uh, she would get like this big, this big board, like, mm -hmm. uh, like the board is huge. And she would say, okay, for summer vacation, I want you to create something, fill it up. And so all during my summer break, even though I might play with kids, my, one of my things that I would do is like, I would fill up the board and create like a big masterpiece, yeah. you know, or whatever, you know, and, and, and it was good for, I look at it as an adult, I look at it as like, wow, you know, my mom really used that to like push me to like, you know, do challenging art. But it also it was twofold. It's like kept me, yeah, you know, kept, kept you out of trouble. <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I didn't do other stuff. It's like yeah. it took some time to fill up that board, and and and, and then, you know I really wanted to do something really good, not just you know mess it up and put crap on there. Yeah, so, no. It, it, like I said, she sounds like she's just like my mom. You know, and I think you know back then they don't quite have it as much as anymore in schools, but they used to have all kinds of extracurricular activities yeah. and so anything art related you know arts and crafts you know my mom would make sure that I was in just like I said you still did the kid stuff with your friends during the summer but like I said when you had something like that it just filled up the extra time and, and fueled your creativity yeah that, and those are great you know and um, I had also had like good uh, art instructors in school, you know, like not not necessarily the the art instructors from like the the art youth yeah. program, but I had I had like I had like good art instructors in just regular public school. Yeah, you know, they yeah. they would, um, which I really you know I really value them because they saw some things in me as well. And even though I would do like some of the classroom assignments, they would do like, extra things with me. They would just say, hey. You know, can you do this? Or I remember my one instructor when grade school, she gave out the art assignment. We had to draw like this tree using like the letter Y and the letter V. Yeah. And she called it V tree. It's like you do a letter Y to do the base and then all the branches are V's. But then she pulled me to the side. She's like, okay, I'm gonna, you're gonna do this, but then I'm gonna teach you how to do leaves and do some of the background. So it was, you know, I always had instructors that would do that. And then, you know, um, from my grade school and high school, 
both my art instructors talked to like the principals of, of like in my grade school and high school, both the instructors talked to the principals and they put me on things to where it's like, I did like the flyers, you know, yeah. like the Lee club had like something that was going on. I would do like the portraits for like president's day or yeah. whatever holiday it was. And then in high school, um, they got me on the uh, school newspaper. So I did mm, like a lot yeah. of drawing graphics for that as well. And if they had any special events and they needed like someone to do some artwork, I was part of that crew. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate like my parents and those instructors that just kind of yeah. saw something. It's like, hey, let's, let's, let's put this kid over here and yeah. eat a lot of gift. No, like I said, I so, so agree with it. Um, you know, like I said, we kind of mirror in that fact. You know, yeah. Like I said, I had a lot of teachers and especially my counselor. She was like really, really behind, um, you know, the talent that I had. And so anytime I would go into her, especially as I was graduating and starting to look at schools and stuff like that, she would have a list of scholarships and art schools and say, hey, you need to apply to these art schools or you need to apply to these, you know, scholarships and things like that. So she was always behind um, and a big shout out to Miss Snyder. You know, it's been a long time, but you so remember those people, like I said, that really speak into your talent and really nurture it because it's so easy yeah. for a lot of, especially adults, to kind of steer you down a different path that they think you should go down, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, you have to appreciate those teachers that really see those things in students, you know, all across the board, you know, it's, you know, sometimes teachers are just like, ah, you know, sometimes students can, can wear them out. Because I talk to and I, I, I you know, like, man, I, I taught from, I taught kindergarten through college. So I Holy background. So, so I understand what they have to go through, but it's really cool when they can still like focus in on certain students who have certain things about them and, yeah. and, and kind of push or guide or, or hone certain things. So I, I really appreciate yeah. all that growing up and, um, yeah. yeah it's, you know it's it's you know all that's the part of where i'm in am today you know it's it pushed me to never give up and continue to push myself and you know work harder and learn new things awesome awesome mr uh shashong i appreciate you tuning in there yeah age is just a number really yeah. is and, and that's the beauty of what we do like i said as long as we can hold a pencil and you know do our craft we'll be drawing until we get put in the box i guess so <laughs> yeah one thing about artwork as well is that the artwork speaks for itself yeah you know, it's 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 one of those mediums that yes education and discipline and certain certain things help but the bottom line is how the artwork looks you know if your artwork if your artwork is just as good as and professional is what you see out there, you know, that will hold its weight as I think it'll hold its weight as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And like age doesn't matter, even though, you know, some people have said that there is some ageism, but you know, I push through it. You know, I, yeah. I, I try to do it. And I, and part of part, I will say this part of me is that, um, I had to, I'm always adapting, you know, it's, uh, like when I started in the animation industry or illustration industry, there was a certain look and style of that time, but you know, throughout ages, the styles have changed. The storytelling has changed a little bit. And you know, what, what was appealing when I first started, it may not be quote unquote appealing today. Yeah. Yeah. And in order for me to, I, I'm talking about more as far as me working in the industry, yeah. in order to continue working in the industry, I had to adapt and change and, yeah. and, and flow with the times, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, yeah. but, it depends on what your goal is and what you want to do. You know, yeah. I was to <laughs> at that time, at that point, it's just to stay employed. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, it's and like even it. the tools, like I said, yeah. I'm pretty sure now, like I said, you're using totally different tools that you weren't, like I said, drawing, you're not drawing hand, you know, the traditional hand drawing animations now and things that you're doing, you're using a lot of tools on the computer that are really helping you to create your so like i said it's learning and being open to uh learn new things and learn new technologies new techniques and the things that you grasp it on to yeah and it's uh like uh, i put it to you this way uh 
it's always challenge. It's challenging, but it's I, I, it, that's why I have young friends, you know, I talk to them and they, they kind of let me know how, well, sometimes the programs are so user friendly. If you learn one, then when you segue into another program, it's, it's a lot easier because you've, you've mastered or learned enough of the other yeah. program so that it's more user friendly. Um, uh, and there's still more things I would like to learn. And, uh, I, I, you know, whenever I can, I, I push myself to do it, but it's, yeah, it's, it's it's a, uh, a, a evolving industry, you know. What, what's popular today, you know, next, however, in the future, whatever new program <laughs> comes up, is, <laughs> there's it. always a new one around the corner. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. And we were talking earlier about the edit suite. I remember, like, when I first started, uh, uh, again, everything was drawn traditionally, hand drawn on paper, you yeah, know, paper and painted on sales. But like to get your thing even edited. A, a good edit suite, and this is not even talking about animation costs and everything else, but just to get things edit. The edit suite was like five hundred bucks an hour. Yeah, you know? and that was that was that was like a deal. You know, that was like a, a good edit <laughs> suite with a deal deal. You know, they had like at that time it was uh, uh, man, I forgot what it's called. Digital. Yeah. I guess digital editing when digital editing first started. Um, those suites were like I, the one suite I used to like go to. They charge five hundred dollars an hour yeah, yeah. <laughs> to just like use use the, the facilities. But now you know everything's at home. Yeah, you, know, you, you can you can buy the software and programs and, and do all that stuff at home. So yeah, it's 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 a lot more easier to do your own thing and and to edit your own thing. You know, yeah. and yeah, and uh, that's that's what makes me excited about you know, being in this industry and still, still doing what I, whatever I have to do is because now it's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. And like I can say, like you were just saying, we were talking before, um, you know, the, the technology's gotten so much faster. The software's gotten so much more, um, better and more readily available. You got open source software, animation yeah. software like Blender and others that are are just you can do some amazing stuff and it doesn't cost you anything but just the, the creativity and time behind it and plus i think a lot of companies now see the the value of getting their software in the hands of young creatives you know they're giving out student versions you know you know low cost versions or or light versions of the software so they're getting the tools out there in the hands of the creatives now that you know they're just doing some just crazy things with the software like zbrush unreal all that software out there you just see so many amazing things coming from just you know a lot of times kids that are just tootling around in the software, you know? You know what's really cool about that? I, I think about like when Photoshop first came out, you know, mm. and, and, and you say Flash too. It's like both yeah. those programs, they were created for a specific thing. Photoshop, oh, photo retouch. Flash yeah. is more like a web page design. Yeah. Or web thing. design. But, but, you know, artists grabbed the tool and they took it and, and, and made it into something else. Yeah. And that's, that's what I like about art and artists. It's like, you know, we are, we have this ability to take something and make, you know, or take nothing and make something out of it or take something and make it better. Yeah. You know, yeah. And we can get certain tools and say, oh, if we did that and did this, maybe this might work. You know, yeah. that's, that's why I'm always fascinated. Like I used to, I grew up and still watch a lot of like behind the scenes featurette yeah, yeah. Like movies and things yeah. like that, and I remember like when Industrial Light and Magic was would do their things with Star Wars, and yeah. they were interview, they were interview like the the special effects guys, and they would say, "Oh, you know, uh, you know, nowadays you guys have the computer to do all this stuff," and they were like, "No, we had to make the computer." <laughs> it's like you know, we, we'll look at a storyboard and we'll have this effect, and they'll say, "Okay, it has to look like this," and then. Their job was, okay, we have to make the computer. We have to figure out how this special effect, how to create this special yeah. effect or, or create this, uh, this uh, makeup effect or whatever. But that's what I love about artists. You know, it's like yeah. artists, that they, they, they take the task and then they take the tools of the time or whatever and they either they recreate, they create something new yeah. or they take something that's existing and then use it for something that it wasn't even intended to be used yes. for. Yeah, yeah. no. I think now, uh, 
a, a, a new thing that oh wow like photoshop it's like oh man i didn't know we can actually draw pictures in photoshop I'm, oh, I'm yeah. Never- yeah and i think um there was a quote by john lasseter and he was saying you know art pushes technology and technology pushes art so they kind of push each other because like you said yeah. it, the, the technology gets in the hands of the artists and they're use it for something that the, the technology people had no idea or hadn't even thought about what it could be used for like i said when unreal came out you know it was just a game engine and then the movie studios got their hands on it and thought about, wow, we can make a real time environment, you right. know, using it for film and stuff. So I think, like you said, I love just the creative space because it pushes each other. Technology pushes art and pushes the artists that create it. And then the artists push the technology people, you know, to make the art. The, the software better and to do what they, you know, that's what I loved watching behind the scenes too, because like you said, you'd watch some of the behind the scenes of Pixar and they were constantly pushing the technology people. Hey, we need this software to do this. We need this, you know, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I, I, I think about that. I saw a video and it, you know, people are really doing it now. It's, but, but when I first saw it, I was like, wow, when people were using blender to do mm. two, 2d animation and they were using like a 3d camera and it's like you know it looks like 2d animation but just a little bit more plus to it. it's like wow you know it's like you know, taking all these great tools and and utilizing it to 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 make whatever the artist wants it to be and uh yeah. that's the great thing about like i said i i i really enjoy artists and throughout time you know even in art, art history when you study the artists and how, you know, like, like those great, like Da Vinci, you know, he was like artist, but then he was an inventor and he created all these various things because of the artistic mind and utilizing whatever was available. And then, like you said, taking it forward to create more, to advance civilization or to, to, to contribute something more. So I'm always excited, uh, looking at new artists and seeing what they've done with like the software and things like that and uh, pushing the brown boundaries so to get me like, wow, I think I'm going to try that. You yeah, know? for sure. For sure. Uh, Ms. Barbette, appreciate you stopping by. Hello. Uh, long time. Uh, season one guest, Miss Elizabeth. Uh, I'm curious what the animation industry is doing to make things more procedural. Um, I don't know if you can answer that. I think, um, you know, I think with the software now, you know, it's it's becoming more procedural based where they can, <clears throat> like I said, really make things easier um, to create, you know, just so many different things, whether it's textures, whether it's animation and allowing them to make those quick changes um, that they yeah, need to make. Harmony has definitely uh, up, up the game as far as uh uh, traditional 2D, like uh, the show I've worked on, uh, The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, is uh, they use Toon Boom Harmony for the animation. And plug to our uh, sponsor, Toon Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and one of the cool things is, uh, uh, you know, our EP Bruce Bruce Smith mentions that you know the like the care a lot of the characters had like that cool hair texture. Like yeah. you look at the the animated short hair love, you know, it's like. Yeah. You have all those great hair textures and clothing textures and all these things that you can now animate traditionally through the program. And um, like you were saying earlier, as far as replacement, replacing elements quickly and uh, fine tuning things faster, uh, the, the software allows itself so that you can have a, a an efficient p- pipeline, but then a, a faster pipeline. But then <laughs> the downside to it is you know, it's like, okay, now that everything's faster, you yeah, think, you, we need to get this stuff faster. Now, now, now we can cut that deadline, make it, make it, you know, twice, as <laughs> half, make it cut it in half. So, so now you have a, a shorter deadline or you have more work to do. You know, yeah. I know like in our industry, uh, especially like in the storyboard and, and, and character design, like when I first started, uh, uh, there was like character designer, cleanup artists, layout artists, uh, storyboard artists, uh, 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 man, I, I, I'm 
probably forgetting all of them, but assistant storyboard artists. But there were like all these various positions that like that were like one person's job. Yeah. But with how the software is, it's like now they'll take animatic artists, storyboard artists, storyboard cleanup artists. That's all one job. You know, it's like, okay, that's one person does that. You know, some jobs do uh, character design, character design, cleanup. Oh, now you're just one job now. You know, whereas it used to be, uh, you know, separate jobs. And, you know, our industry with the union, you know, we're, we're trying to work out so that some of those are not, you know, those jobs are not tasking and, yeah. you know, we'll pay. And I mean, it's it's a lot of, a lot of things that need to be worked out, but yeah, the software soft, uh, where it makes it easier, but then it also can can make it to where push, it's push the production, of, yeah, yeah, push the production, but then put a lot of more work on an artist. You know, yeah. it's like before when I used to, when I used to storyboard back in the day when we drew everything, I didn't have to worry about like putting in music and cutting. <laughs> that, that was an animation job, you know. Jobs, it's like oh oh. I got to put in music and cut. <laughs> you know, not all jobs, but some jobs, you know, they, they add all the extra things because, oh, yeah, it's all in the computer. You can yeah. make it easier. So, so hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, studios will, will, some of those studios that are doing that stuff will like really look at it and say, nah, you know, you got to, you got to, got to spread the love and yeah. bring in people to do those positions. Yeah. What do you feel like? the biggest thing you kind of took away from your time, you know, training at Walt Disney animation, you know, when you were getting into it and kind of came out of it, what do you feel like was kind of the biggest thing, you know, walking away from it? Well, for me, it was, it was, and I tell people like when I, when I taught, I used to tell people this is that uh, when I, when I got into Disney, I had already graduated out of college. I was, I had a, uh, I went to college and uh, have BFA in illustration. So, so at the time, my thing was, I I really didn't know, like, where the big animation job. I knew, you know, you had to move to California, but still, my mind wasn't really there yet until I got into the Disney part. But um, my 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 skill and learning that I learned for illustration was totally <laughs> flipped upside down when I got into animation because you know illustration. And, and I'm not saying this for all illustrators because some illustrators might have gotten this and I didn't get into a lot later. Yeah. But as an illustrator, I, I was taught, I, 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 I learned to like look at details, how to focus on things and draw what I saw and, you know, caricaturize it or, or stylize it. But it was more about like rendering technique, uh, seeing, and I did take anatomy. So I didn't, I did know anatomy and, and the figure and things like that. But it was more about, looking at what you see and embellishing it and adding details and, you know, stylizing it. But when I got into the Disney thing, it was like, they taught me how to break things into shapes. And the reason why I say break things into shapes is because now like with illustration, I will paint a picture or draw a drawing. And it's that one drawing, that's it. The one illustration, the final, final image, but in animation, it's like, no, it's, that one image that needs to be rotated and moves mm. and jumps and flips, you know, it's shot from various angles. So, 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 so the Disney thing taught me to see things as to break things down into shapes and see things in 3d elements. So like, I remember the first, the first uh, day that I was there, uh, <laughs> our instructor at the time, they, they, they drew like a, a circle, a, 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 re, a circle, a square, and a triangle. And they were like, okay, this is a circle, this is squares, this is a triangle. It's like, and, and this is what you're not gonna do here. And he says, no, when you look at this, you don't see this as a circle, you see it as a sphere, something that's 3D. Yeah. When you look at the square, you don't see it as a square, you see it as a cube, something that rotates and has yeah. various angles. I mean, you look at this triangle and what they did was they flipped it and made it into a cylinder. So it's like, these are these are elements that will help you in in animation drawing, and so that when you're drawing, you can even if you understand anatomy and you understand how things and mechanics how things work, if you break it up to its bare minimum, simplistic shapes that rotate, yeah. then when I'm drawing, it's like oh the head is just a a sphere with a little bit of detail. So when I flip the head, 
I'm under, I'm looking at it as a sphere or my yeah. arm is just a cylinder. So if my cylinder is moving around at various angles, then I can continually draw that character in in space. Space, you know? yeah. Put it around it yeah. in three space. So so that was that was one of the main. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff I got yeah. out of it. That was that was one of the main things because it it changed my whole it changed my whole idea of drawing. Yeah. And to the point that when I used to do live drawing, I relied so much of looking at my the the uh, the reference of what I'm drawing. Like you know, I'm in live yeah. drawing class, and I used to love doing live drawing anatomy. And I would you know we would draw the model and you know look at the model, but then after like that Disney experience, when I went back to life drawing, it's like, oh, the model's there. The model takes off and leaves, and I'm still drawing. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I now I'm understanding, even though I don't have the model in front of me to draw, I'm understanding like shapes and and, and things, and applying my knowledge of anatomy so that I can put it on top of my life drawing to finish it up. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, you know, I'm kind of repeat myself, but yeah, that was that was like one of the big main things uh, that I, that I learned. And then when I started teaching anatomy, uh, I taught a class, a class called anatomy for animation and drawing for animation. And those are like the, that was the biggest thing that I brought into it. Like I would have the students draw the figure and the, and I will purposely have, there were two exercises that we did to kind of get the students to get it. It's uh, one exercise was we would have the model pose, you know, regular pose, and then the model will leave. And then you have to finish up your drawing, you know, and those are things that I was doing. And then the other one was that um, you draw your drawing and then I'll have the students switch so that now they have to finish up <laughs> someone else's drawing I know. They have to finish up someone else's drawing. So now it's teaching you how to kind of translate what that one student was doing. But all those exercises, it's training the mind to see things and to keep image more you yeah. know that was a thing that i learned it's like our mind is like a camera um when i'm drawing something you know i'm looking at whatever my source material is my mind takes a snapshot and then i look at whatever i'm drawing on and then when that image starts to fade in my mind i have to look back up at what i'm drawing take another snapshot and then start to draw until that image starts to fade and then i keep repeating that process but seeing shapes and knowing how to look at things it trained my mind to keep the image in longer yeah you know yeah. it's like um that's why like, like even now sometimes and i couldn't do this before but but even now like if i'm designing a character it's always great to have reference you know we use yeah. reference all the time and we use it to be inspired to to do whatever character designs but but even now even sometimes even if i don't have reference my ability to remember, oh yeah, I remember I was walking down the street and that one guy had that cool haircut, or yeah. I remember seeing this 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 person had this cool outfit on. And even though I didn't draw it, because I've been training myself to like look at things differently, um, my imagination and memory of of details is is a lot stronger. Yeah. So and I, and again, I, I I give that all back to when I was had that experience at Disney. Yeah. Um, they definitely, you know, have the, they definitely taught me those those things how to mm -hmm. how to see yeah. and how you know maintain image imagery in my mind longer. Yeah, yeah, no, I I I definitely agree in that. Uh, that was something that kind of I had to pick up too when I started um, in animation was seeing two D in with volume. Yeah, and seeing it with volume. And I know um, uh, you probably heard of him because he used to be a director at uh, Disney, Aaron Blaze. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he does these amazing animal illustrations and, you know, he directed Brother Bear and some of the other ones. But I've heard him and other artists say when you understand the basic shapes and forms of an object that you're drawing, you, after a point you won't need the reference so much anymore because you can understand the basic shapes and then see it in volume like it turned this way oh okay i see yeah. this character turn this way i understand the volume of what the shape would be so i could draw it out from there so that's that's i think a big lesson for young artists is to un break things down 
into simple, simple shapes. Yeah, and there, there, like you know, there are some books that, that that talk about it. Like one, like when I was younger, one book that really broke it down for me, and it's it wasn't really well, two books, two books that really broke it down. There's a uh, Pres- the Preston Blair books. You know, they, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now Preston Blair, like you can get like the big books that they released back in the day. Uh, yeah, but they also like have this. Uh, the Preston Blair has like a, a thicker book called Cartoon Animation. I yeah. think that's. And it, and it has all of the other books and it's all combined into like this one little thick book. But he breaks that thing down into like where you see shapes and line of action and, and things like uh, 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 squash and stretch and line yeah. curves versus straights. Um, then the other book as well is uh, for me was uh, there's actually, I'll say three books. The other book is uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that one, yeah. Yeah. There's a section in there about drawing the figure where uh, John Buscema, he breaks it down where he has like, he, he goes from gesture or like, like you know, just simple lines and then he puts the shapes on top and he fleshes it out and he shows you like a process of how to draw like a figure by using those shapes. And there's a whole section where it just breaks it down he has like the actual comic book panels, but then he, on, a, on the same page next to the comic book panel, he shows how that shape is broken, how, how, the, how that particular panel is broken up into just basic shapes. And learning how to see things that way and applying details on top, you know, that's, that's a great way to, to make things out of your mind, but then also, like I said, turn things in, in, in motion, a 3D space. And then the third book also, another old book, <laughs> The, the 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 well two more uh there's the illusion i'm sorry four books the illusion of life yeah i got <laughs> so, that one too the illusion of life and then the uh the animation uh animators was, toolkit yeah, yeah, by, yeah uh, the, the richard williams book. yeah richard williams yeah yeah that, that book i mean all those there are a lot more but those four books really like for me uh, uh help me to see more and, and and those are books i constantly always go back to you know, even today, it's, you know, so much stuff to learn and it's so many, so many things to apply to, to, to what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, again, everybody just joining us. We're having a fun and amazing conversation uh, mm-hmm. with my friend, Laren uh, Dijonet from Disney. We're getting ready to take a look at his demo reel. And like I say, you'll uh, get an amazing uh, look into uh, his style um, and the work that he does for sure. So let's take a quick look. Yeah, I wanted to set up. Yeah, this is a. Uh, uh, I directed some sh- some stuff at uh, Six Point Harness and and through for Marvel. And uh, these are like some of the uh, the spots that the, the things that I directed. So I think this is the Marvel stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is yeah, a lot Marvel, of Spider Man and Marvel, Marvel stuff. Yeah. Okay. Some amazing animation. So let's take a quick look, everyone.
Amazing work for sure. What what did you use for that? I mean, what was there a software? All that, all that stuff was done Toon Boom Harmony. Toon Boom. And then, yeah, yeah. And we had we had we had an uh, an animation studio, uh Mint Studios, uh, that that helped us. I think they're in uh dang, oh man, why I'm forgetting. I think they're in uh I wanna say India, maybe. Mm -hmm. in, I think yeah, Mint Studios in India. Yeah, and I, I had I had a brain fart there, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, through Six Point Harness and Marvel and uh, Mint Studios, and um, uh, it was one of those things where they wanted Marvel wanted to have some um, some little shorts to tie into the yeah. uh, Spider Man Maximum Venom series. Yeah. So as you can see, the amazing stuff that you can do with Toon Boom. So I would highly suggest you uh, get into the giveaway there. Mr. Carinder, appreciate you uh, tuning in there. Uh, but for sure, like I said, we just got done checking out um, Lauren's reel there and some amazing, amazing work. Uh, Miss Tiana, yes, we are going to put, I'm going to put in the show notes all the references to the books that uh, Larry just was mentioning about. Uh, they'll, they'll be in the show notes. Or two. I can, I can give some more books as well. If you, yes. If you... And all that will be in the show notes on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you hop back over there once the uh, episode's up and you'll be able to get references. There are some amazing books. I got like four or five of them that he mentioned that are just Bibles for animators. <laughs> They're kind of like the Bibles that animators go to uh, for sure. Mr. Uh, Downtown DeMille, yes, fantastic work for sure. Like I said, as you can see, why I, I, I needed to reach out to him and, you know, build a friendship with him because he does some amazing, amazing stuff. Mr. Andre, solid, solid reel for sure. Um, yes. Solid Real, Miss Brianna. Amazing, amazing. And wait till you see, uh, like I said, some of the two, 2D work that he's uh, done. I'm going to be showing that in a minute for sure. Some of the stuff that Gumbo Yo has done and is working on uh, just, just like I said, blows you away. Very clean, clean work. Yeah, I loved it. And I love the action. Like I said, it was just, you know, I love the way the action was. And like I said, again, I can't oh, say it enough. Uh, yeah. The Toon Boom stuff that you could do with Toon Boom. There's some amazing animations that companies are do using now or creating now um, with that software. It's just kind of industry standard is what I tell people as far as creating 2D style animation. Um, that was a, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of timely. <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of timely there for sure uh so i would highly suggest anybody that checks out this episode like i said you still have four or five more days july 7th midnight central standard time is when the giveaway ends so you still have time to get into the giveaway but you have to do three things make sure that you hop on over to the linkedin page the Facebook group page, check out the video and the post. It'll tell you the things that you need to do. Very simple things. I mean, you'll get entered into the giveaway. And like I say, you too have a chance to get your hands on a one-year subscription to those amazing software, uh, Harmony 21 and Storyboard Pro. Um, just some amazing, amazing software, as you can see, um, the things that you can do. Uh, Miss Tiana, perfect. Thank you for sure. Again, all that, all this information uh, will be up in the show notes uh, for sure. Um, I'm curious, at what point, like once you got out of you know Disney uh, animation, um, did you immediately go into working for Disney, or at what point did you feel like okay, I'm I'm skillfully ready? To, to get into this industry and, you know, be a force within this industry? Well, you know, I, I, I tell this, well, I think I've mentioned, well, I don't think I've ever mentioned this. I mentioned it to, to my, uh, <laughs> to, to my, my good friend and uh, creator of Pro family, Bruce Smith. Uh, I always had a desire to do animation, you know, um, I was, it was, I would say it was illustration was the, was the tangible thing because I, I knew professional illustrators and 
illustration was it was it was an industry that I didn't necessarily have to relocate. You know, um, I, I I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit. And, yes, Detroit, three one three Motown. Mm. I uh, I had like friends and instructors from the school I went to that were professional illustrators. So that was someone that I can actually see and talk to and kind of see, wow, you know, they're in the industry, they're making this thing happen. Um, so, so my plan A was always, okay, professional illustrator. And the plan B was to pursue animation. Um, I had an instructor uh, named Denise Dawson, who was an, an, an animator and, and did work in Detroit. Um, and she got me my first job, you know, um, I was a student but she felt like, you know, my work level was good enough to like do professional work. So she referred me uh, a job in the, in the industry in Detroit and, you know, Detroit is like the motor city. So they did, they did like a lot of car commercials, mm. uh, they, they like industrial yeah. nice. And some of those commercials had like uh, animation. So, so I was referred to like, uh, there was a studio called Universal Images and Grace and Wild and Rocket Productions. Those studios would like handle like animation for some of the industrial things. So it wasn't like consistent work, but every once in a while, if they had animation, I would do that. But I really was still looking at it as, oh, well, it's a cool freelance gig, but I really want to do illustration. So the thing that kind of got me into like focusing more on like, oh, well, I can work at Disney is that there was a, uh, the movie, um, page master, mm. the movie page master with Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Uh, you buy that DVD, there's a featurette on behind the scenes of how that movie was, you know, how they did that movie. And in the featurette, there's a section where like the director was a black guy, you know, Maurice Hunt, he directed it. But then there's also a part of the video, like I saw, I was like, wow, black guy directed this thing, you know? But, but my mind still wasn't, I wasn't thinking like, oh, wow, I want to be an animation director now. You know, that's way above where my vision was when I was younger. But then they go to a section of it when there's a young Bruce Smith sitting at an animation table, flipping drawings, and he's drawing like the characters. And he's wow. drawing how the characters, like I'm, I'm, like watching him on this uh, featurette actually draw the characters. Yeah. And some of the things like, and some artists may have this, but I definitely had this, is that I would see the final product. I would see the final like animation, the final illustration, the final drawing. And because you don't understand the process of how they got to the final, sometimes my mind was like, oh man, I can never, man, that's, man, that, wow, how did they do that? I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I can ever get to that level. Yeah. But, when you see those featurettes and you see them break it down, it was kind of like they have an animation. It's kind of like I saw the final product. It's like, oh, I would never be able to do Disney levels type animation. But when I saw that featurette and I saw Bruce like drawing, yeah. like he, he's, he's showing you the process. He's showing you, no, it's not, that's not the, that's, you know, the end goal is a process of various process that you have to do in order to get to the end goal. That was, that was the key that told me, okay, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to shoot for uh for working at Disney. Yeah. And from that time forward, you know, I submitted my work and and like not too much longer I got an internship at uh Disney Florida. Hmm. You know, and and from there that was it's kind of like a snowball from there Disney Florida, you know, um I started getting more animation work, freelance work and then I started getting commercial work and then the, the <laughs> The, the college that I went to, because I didn't take the job at, at Florida right away, I went back to Michigan. But, you know, because of all the things I was learning, uh, the, I, I taught at the college. And then a lot of some of my students were like getting jobs at Disney and everywhere. So it was, it was one of those things where, you know, I was always like a, uh, I was like a kid in a candy store. I was a kid in a candy store because yeah. I love learning the knowledge of things, but that was the key thing that got me to like say, okay, I'm going to go for Disney was, was seeing Bruce on that featurette and uh, seeing that, okay, I can do it. You know, yeah. before there was a desire, but then there was some apprehension because I felt like as an artist, I didn't have, I didn't have the skill yeah. level yeah. Uh, yeah. to get to that point. But yeah. yeah, that yeah. So, I mean, so it must be an amazing feeling now at this point in your life to be working 
with Bruce on some things, you know, projects uh, that you're working on. Um, and what, you know, for you, did Bruce kind of impart to you, you know, just as you started, you know, getting work there and getting into Disney and getting into the space? Because like you said, you watch the 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 behind the scenes and the, the making of and you saw, wow, there's this there's this black man that's drawing, there's this black man that directed it, how inspiring that is. What was it? Was there anything that Bruce said to you kind of coming in, you know, and starting to work with him and, and do projects with him that kind of really inspired you and, and, and motivated you and showed you that, hey, I can be in this industry and I have what it takes to be in this industry? Well, well, there was two things. Uh, I, I, I worked on the original Broad Family series and, and, and um, like uh, Bruce hired me to do work on that. And then I also worked like uh, Disney Adventures magazine had a comic book, uh, not a comic book, but had like a, you know, had a magazine with a comic book, comic strip section. Yeah. Uh, Proud Family was like one of the strips that they had. So, you know, Bruce thought that it would be like kind of cool for me to work on the strip so that I can learn the characters and know how to draw them and things like that. And one of the things about working on that strip is that um, I used to meet with Bruce one on one after hours and to like show him my roughs and, you know, give him an idea of where I was going. And then he would always like, like he would do like draw overs, you know, um, he still does it now, but you know, yeah. everything's digital, but he would take like little, little, um, um, post-it notes and put it over like my drawings and kind of give me little notes and show me things. That I, you know, show me how, how to visualize it, how to think. Um, that was the first thing I really learned from my, it's that, you know, he's quick with it, you know, like certain things that might take trial and error for me to figure out. He was like, no, hey, hey, why have you ever thought about this? Or maybe try this. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool. And just to see him draw, he's one of those guys that, um, you know, he's a director, well, he's an EP, but he's a director that, that teaches, you know, there are yeah. some directors that kind of like just tell you things and give you sort of notes and say, okay, you figure it out. But then Bruce is one of those pretty people who he gives you notes and then he draws out things and then he lets you know the why. And, and, and that's how, that's one of the things I learned from him. And those are the things that I try to implement is that if I'm giving someone notes, it's kind of like, I want them to know the why, you know, yeah. not just do this because I want this to be done, but it's like, you learn why possibly to change the color or why to draw it this way and understand, well, to draw it this way, or draw a pose this way tells the story a little bit more or to add that color can can invoke a certain feeling to the viewer yeah. and those things were those are like things i learned from bruce and uh, to this day now even on the new series he does that um and uh and and just you know just to see you know him as as an influence someone yeah. who, who who created his own show and you know, it got it. It's on Disney and, you know, it's now it's a revival and it's still going, you know, we're on season two. So, so those are all more inspirations of, of, of something that you can create and possibly create a series and create a fandom and, and, and do more things with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because, um, and I'll reference back to, uh, Deborah's show, they were having this conversation about, uh, constructive criticism um, and being open to that. Do you feel like, you know, you really opened yourself? Because like, you, and I'm pretty sure you see a lot of people that come through um, artist-wise that can't, don't take criticism that well or have problems taking it as constructive criticism for them to get better. Was that something that, you know, you initially you know, had pretty well, or was that something you had to kind of, you know, work to as far as thickening up your skin and really seeing it as this is the way that I get better, you know? Oh, no, I, constructive criticism, I, that was a part of me from day one, you know, just when my parents put me in those youth art classes, they, you know, they were instructors, you know, they, yeah. they, they bite their tongue, you know, and, that, and that's one thing I can say about possibly, if someone wants to attend a college, you know, they, they would most definitely that whole thing about all oh, this, I was good in high school, I was good in grade school, and I'm the best, I was the best <laughs> artist. 
if you go in there, they they treat you like professionals. You know, they tell you the truth. A good school would, yeah. Put it because there are some schools that students are like, no, nah, that school didn't teach me nothing. But <laughs> a good art college would yeah. would tell you the truth. Like like the school like the school I went to at the time, and I don't know if it's still that way. You had to be vetted just to get in. Yeah, you know, you had to like have some work that you showed them. Yeah. You didn't get in, they would like suggest, okay, well, maybe take some elective courses to build up your portfolio. Yeah. They just didn't let people in just because, you know, yeah. they had money to get in. Um, but I would say this, uh, and I would have to, I'm not saying that it's never been this way, but I would definitely say because of how social media is, yeah, that likes and followers do not equate necessarily good art. You know, and again, art is subjective, but I'm talking about as far as good, as far as being in the industry, Yeah. if I put it that way, because, you know, there are some things you don't know, you know, there's some styles like South Park, you know, yeah. you can look at South Park and say, oh, that art looks horrible, but it works within the industry yeah. and what it does. So there's always a, a level, of, a grain of salt, you know, to say, you know, chew the meat, spit out the bones. But what I'm trying to say is that there are some people who, they say, you know, I want to get into the animation industry. I want to do this. And the constructive criticism comes into play is because sometimes they say, well, you know, people like my art and this is that. And then you give them constructive criticism and, and um, you know, they get offended or get upset or, or say this. And I try not, what I do is, is that I'm not the person to give criticism online. Yeah. You know, if like someone emails me or asks me or they post something and say, hey, you know, I have this, uh, critiques are welcome or someone can, you know, give me some, some ideas or, or some, you know, or, or help me out of making this thing work. Then that's when I would jump in. But, um, you know, you have to have thick skin. Yeah. You know, this, this is the industry. This is a business, you know, shows, even, you know, the shows that we work on, you know, there's tons of work, tons of revisions, tons of going back and forth, retakes, you know, things that have to look a certain way. You know, you, you just get an art book, just get an art of whatever movie or animation <laughs> and you will see, yeah. oh, wow, that's, those were the beginning sketches. And that looks nothing like the final. You know, you see all the various drawings and stuff that never made it yeah. to the final. So that lets you know that someone said, no, nah, <laughs> we're going to change it. No, nah, I don't like this. This doesn't quite work. <laughs> it's not working. So and, and all those things mean that it's not saying that you're not a good artist. It's just saying that. There are some things within your art that needs to change in order to make it look a certain way. Yeah. You know, in some cases, like people that are not in the industry, maybe it is. Maybe it's like, hey, you know, maybe you have a skill level, but possibly you need to take some anatomy courses so that your anatomy is okay, or or color theory so that yeah. you know your color is cool, or, or perspective so that your backgrounds and layouts look cool. But it's it's it has to begin with drive and and focus. You know, just because you were the best artist in high school and college, uh, and I'm not saying art college, I'm just yeah. saying like college, like yeah. grade school, college or regular, that, that, that that's not a, training you to be a professional artist. That doesn't not, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will make it in the yeah. industry. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but it does require lots of discipline, lots of, lots of training, lots of knowledge, uh, listening to people, learning from people, you know, uh, growing uh but yeah you have to have thick skin yeah. you have to and then you know don't i'll say it this way there are some people like i i have met people like in the industry and i tell people there within my 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 perspective is i've met two types of people in this industry there are a-holes and there are people that are real cool yeah. there are people who will give you advice and tell you hey you know what if you really want to get into this this is you got to do a b c d e your portfolio has to look blah 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 and then you have the a-holes who have come with more of an arrogance it's yeah. like kind of like they 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 it's like they get off telling you your work stinks or your yeah. crap or you're never making in this industry and you know i've had people tell that to me i have people say like ah, oh, no you you'll, you'll never you'll never do you know animation only certain people do this or yeah, certain yeah, yeah. Do and you know and and, and, I, and at that time again i'm speaking for myself i don't think it was because I didn't like the talent, I just think that they just didn't understand it, or, 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 or like I said, you know, arrogance. You know, some yeah. people get that stuff. So, so if if artists, if you really want to uh, 
you know, be a professional artist, you have to have thick skin. Yeah. 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 And even if all everything is right, you know, you can have the right show, the right character, there's still going to be somebody Some, online. Yeah. Crap. Yeah. You're always going to have someone that's not going to like it. And that's, that's what's cool about, you know, entertainment. So, yeah. You know, there are genres and niches and, and you have your audience here. You know, that's why they say that's why representation matters. Yeah, yeah. It's because you have a certain audience over here that possibly your work is for and this audience over there your work is not for yeah. you know so, so of course they may hate it in this yeah. person this section well i think it goes to your credit like you said you loved it and the 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 skill and the passion and you had the skill and the passion and the drive to get past those negative ones that said oh you're just never going to make it or you're just not the right you know like i said yeah. I th whereas a lot of people may let that deter them from moving forward or just continuing to to push forward and get into the industry um and where it comes to you saying you have to have thick skin and you have to be like i said just dogged passionate about this is what i love doing and whatever i need to do to get better i'm going to get better at it yeah, and you have to be real. You know, that's another thing. You have to be real, realistic. It's kind of yeah. like you have to really like look and count the cost and see. Uh, like for me, like I said, when I saw Bruce doing it, that was it for me. It's like, oh, I'm working at Disney. You know, it's like he was, the, he was, the, he was. The, even though I saw other stuff, it was like when I saw him breaking it down. Oh, I can do that because I was already doing that when I was doing illustration. You know, so it's like, oh, I just take that same way of thinking and apply it to animation. And then when it, once I got in and the stuff I learned from them, I learned how to see, you know, 3D space, but you, you have to be real. You have to look and say, okay, as a person, as an artist, as, as, a, as, as, as a, you have to look at, okay, am I disciplined enough? Am I yeah. skilled enough? If I'm not skilled enough, am I disciplined enough to learn a skill and to, to push myself to get better? You know, and, and you do, you, you really have to be realistic. Like, 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 you know, I would. I, I guess take was, an yeah. honest assessment of where your skill level is at and be committed yes. to. And see, I would say this: like when I saw Bruce, and I and I, I just kind of broke it down to very short, and say, "Oh yeah, you know, a few months, a couple of years later, I got in at Disney." What I didn't say is, you know what? That summer vacation, I didn't do anything. I didn't go. I didn't see movies. I didn't hang with my friends as much as I wanted to. You know, there were certain things I had to cut out. It's yeah. like, you know, I and even even when I when I started working in an industry, you know, there were certain things I did all off, you know, after hours or off work that I didn't talk about. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, I need to learn this. So what did I do? It's like, oh I, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm, I'm this weekend I'm learning Flash, I'm learning yeah. Photoshop, I'm learning this program. You know, and it's like, oh, yeah, I can't hang out. I can't do all this stuff. But yeah. but it's like there's a saying and I man, I forgot who said it, but <laughs> you have to live like nobody else so you can live like nobody. Dave else. Ramsey. I use that a lot. Dave Ramsey. You have to live. You have to want to live like nobody else now so you can live like nobody else later. You know, yeah. and I think a lot of people don't sometimes get understand that you have to sacrifice. You're going to have to give up something in order to get something else that you want you know there's yeah. always something that you gotta sacrifice or give up in order to get this other thing that you want and i think a lot of people aren't willing well aren't willing or maybe maybe aren't willing or maybe just don't have the discipline to give up those things that they know they need to give up in order to attain this other thing and that's where the phrase like you just said dave ramsey says a lot a lot of people want wealth but they don't want to do the things in yeah. the beginning that'll get them that wealth to, to live a certain way to make sacrifices on the certain things of spending now in order to have money later yeah yeah and then someone told me too which which called me uh, uh this is a friend of mine and he said, you know, there's no excuse. If you really want it, you will get it. It's yeah. like it's like things that you really want, you, you make you, yeah, you, know, you make the time for. You make yeah. the time. Like if you if you really, really want it, and I thought about this, like, yeah, and I started thinking about okay, the things that I really, really wanted to do in life, like like 
I didn't let things stop me. You know, I didn't let things become a barrier. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to Comic Con. You know, okay, I'm not allowing nothing to stop me from going to Comic Con. <laughs> no, I'm telling my job, I'm taking, I'm taking the days off. I'm going to Comic Con, but it's like you got to, you got to apply that to your ultimate goals. You know, yeah. and if your ultimate goal is to work in this industry and you want to do like animation and things like that, now there's so much things it's like so many, so many freaking YouTube videos yeah. are tutorials and books and uh movies so easy yeah so like, easy now there was there was there was hardly none of this stuff when i was growing up but you know there was just a passion and a drive but now you got passion drive and resources lots of resources so, yeah. so don't 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 let anything detour you from reaching your goal you know if, if this is something and i'm talking to the viewers it's something you really want to do then go for it, you know, yeah. be realistic and go for it and ask questions. Uh, one cool thing that came out of COVID uh, with all the Zoom calls is that a lot of people in the industry and, and just entertainment in general, with all these Zoom meetings and these these free, you know, these free uh, meet, meetings for you to come in and yeah. talk about behind the scenes. One of the cool things that some of these people did after the Zoom calls was like, they were like, "Hey, this is my email address. If you have any questions, please, con you know, feel free to contact me." Yeah, do that. It's like, man, I wish somebody <laughs> was busy or someone back in the day was like, "Hey, here's my mailing address. Here's my telephone number. You know, give me a call whenever you have a question about A, B, C, D, E." It's like there are so many people that are so cool. You know, it's like some folks are like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing this seminar. You know, tune in, or I'm going to be doing this yeah. live chat." Yeah. You know, uh, Tyree DeHillahe had this creative conversations where he was just meeting with creators like like what we're doing and just saying, hey, you know, let's talk about what you do and how'd you get there. There's so much stuff for you to get and so many examples to show you that you can do it. But again, drive, determination, discipline and goals, you know, yeah. knowing, what, knowing what to what knowing what to cut off and what to keep. Deep, yeah, for sure. Mr. Downtown. Uh, for sure, understanding the why is the difference between just doing what somebody else does and actually understanding what they are doing. Yeah, you know, I get a lot. I watch a lot of tutorials, and you get some that you know you you may be learning a software, and you're, they're not telling you why they're pushing this certain button or using this certain tool, and you just don't grasp the the knowledge of. Okay, this is why he's doing it. I can maybe expand on it if I, you know, apply it even more, find a, you know, even more better way of doing it. But you like those teachers that explain the why behind it, as opposed to just telling you this is what you should do. This is how you should draw. Okay, why? It, it, it's spreading the wealth. It's uh, there's a director, Frank Molieri. Uh, I used to stay at when I was at Klasky Chupo. Uh, <clears throat> I used to stay after work. You know, just. That was one of the things I did when I first got started. <laughs> I would stay after work to try to figure things out. You know, it's like, oh man, uh, okay, I need to stay after whatever. But Frank used to be up there, and uh, you know, he worked at like with Don Bluth and worked at Don mm. Bluth. He's an animator. He knows all that stuff. And uh, he he always said to me, "It's like you know what." And this is way. This is when like three D animation was first starting to like really take it. Over and, 2D animators were losing jobs and folks were going bankrupt that they were, you know, in 2D. He was like, man, it's like, you know, uh, one of the things that we have to do, uh, well, actually, no, he said, I, he said, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to share some things with you, but before I share them with you, there's only one thing I ask for you to do. And he, and I was like, what? He's like, uh, share, share the wealth. He's like, you know, our industry, in order for our industry, 2D animation to thrive and continue, we have to share this knowledge to the next generation. We have to like pass it on. And, and so that, you know, the, the whole idea of 2D will, will, will flourish, you know? And, and um, that's one of the things that I, I'm doing and, and, I, and I think other artists should do is that, you know, there's a wealth of knowledge online. There's a wealth of things to help, you know, with 2D and 2D has already made a comeback, you know, yeah. 2D animation has yeah. already made back so so it's not like dire straits where oh my god when, when are we ever going to see another feature 2d animated movie but but you know learning growing sharing that's what makes us better artists and then that's what takes the craft to the next level yeah 
Um, yeah. And, and all the featurettes and things that I've seen, you know, that's those were artists who were willing to share their secrets. You know, that's your life magic or like, yeah, we had to create the computer. And these are some of the things we did in order to create the computer. These were some of the effects that we achieved in this movie to make this look real. This yeah. is something we did with stop motion animation. So that's what keeps us growing and creating. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll be quite on that. As you no, can say, I, get, I, 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 I totally agree. That. I think it's so much better when you're, like I say, in an environment where the veterans or just people that have been in the industry a while are willing to share their knowledge to help you get better, honestly. Uh, Mr. Downtown, I have always felt that when someone says your work is crap without giving you specific examples of what it is not working <laughs> is doing the artist a disservice. I think it, I think it really does. And, and then to take into account who's giving you that criticism. If it's somebody that, you know, is just not an artist or just, you know, you know like you said, can't give you a reason of how to make it better or what they're seeing is wrong, then yeah, it's, you know, you gotta take it with a grain of salt who the information or the criticism is coming from. If it's coming from a veteran that you've seen their work, you you know they've been in the industry a while and their skill level is just here, then, you know, obviously what they're telling you is something, you know, that's gonna serve you unless they're just doing it mean-spiritedly, you know. But if they're doing it from an honest, you know, place and giving you honest criticism on how you can make your skill better, then mm -hmm. it's definitely gonna gonna serve you for sure. Yeah, feedback is always the best thing. You know, no, you know, you got to be honest. You know, you have to be honest. Uh, I've had people, you know, hit me up through social media, and sometimes I can answer, sometimes I can't. But there have been there's some like there was this one person who sent me some stuff and it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it wasn't, it was, it, it was very, it wasn't, it, I'm trying to think of the right word. Other than that. <laughs> wasn't you know, it up just, to standard, I guess. The best well, way it, wasn't even that, it was just more like, Hey, my, my son likes to draw Mickey mouse, but oh. then the Mickey mouse drawing, I'll put you this way. It looks, it looked like someone who's really a non-artist. Yeah. You know, like you have people like a grade school, a grade yeah. school, like someone who, you know, you doodling in a notebook and it's like, hey, can you take a look at this? Can I make it in an industry? And I told that person, it's like, because I didn't know if they were a young person. I was like, well, your work looks like it's kind of like a kid's, but 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 I think they were an older person. They were like old. And so what I did was, you know, the good thing is, is that there's so many resources. Like, you know, yeah, I don't have to, I used to, and I still do to a certain extent, only to people who, I feel like, oh yeah, this person has it. They just need a little bit of guidance, a little bit certain certain things to just tell them to like, okay, this is what you need to do. You do this, you have you have no problems getting it. But like people who just do that because there's so much resources out there, and I don't have to explain. I just give them links to like yeah. very good tutorials. Uh, uh, Titmouse has this very good uh, uh, page on you, uh, YouTube video. The do's or don't the do's and don'ts in portfolio, you know, what to include in your portfolio, how to get a job in the, in the industry. Yeah. I mean, those are all great things to whereas and, and there's like, and those videos are like, some of those videos are like hours long. So for me to try to like type something out on the reply, yeah. it's like referring someone to a video like that with so much depth and information is the best thing. And always put the ball back in people's laps. It's like, yeah. you know, if you want this, you got to do it. You yeah. know, yeah. there's no hookups. There's no, hey, man. <laughs> can you get no. me into the industry? And then like, uh, it, no. There were, people, there were people, oh, geez, I had to do it. I had to do like a, please don't do this. This is a big no no. There were people asking me, oh, hey, can you send me Bruce Smith's contact info? <laughs> I've been trying to contact him for years and I haven't gotten a response. Can you give me his info? Oh, and, man. I don't re I don't reply to those. I never reply to those. But I just send like I just send like just a generic thing out. It's like please don't do that. Oh That's man. It, or, it, or, or, or they ask for my contacts. Like they'll see like they'll look at my resume. It's like hey, I see you worked at so and so. Yeah, can you can you give me something? No. 
<laughs> and I will say somebody, and I'm not going to say their name, but they did. You got to put in the work, man. You have they, to. These things come from networking. From, yeah. from like I said, me me giving up my summer vacations to home my, my sacrifice, crap. sacrifice, sacrifice yeah. movie friendship sometimes yeah. you know you, just, you, know, yeah. partying, you know not eating that expensive meal it's like no you, you have to put in the work and sometimes when you put in the work you yeah. network and you you have like true relationships based on working together and communicating not just oh i just want to hook up with you to, to get something out of you no it's like no I, yeah i want to hook up with you because you're a cool person and i want to be friends those are those are how you get those contacts. Those, yeah. you know, when, when people feel tr- when they when you come across as trustworthy and genuine, that's when those contacts come. That's when people want to work with you and they want to yeah. give you more work and, and refer you to people. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, 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 or you just get, build a relationship. Well, like I yeah. said, and that and I told you the same thing, and I tell every uh, mm-hmm. you know person that I've had on the show when I connect with them. You know, my goal is to build a friendship yeah. because I'm, you know, I'm selfishly, I do this show because I get to pick people's brain and learn. Like I said, this industry not only shares the, the diverse, you know, creators out there, but I'm sitting as a viewer, just like you guys, I'm learning and I'm wanting to ask questions because I'm wanting to get better at what, you know, I love to do. So having the opportunity to talk to people like Lynn, talk to people like Andre, talk to people like Jay, talk to all these people that that I, for for the for the real, have worked to make friendships with, not just a, a guest on the show. And I told you that it goes beyond you being on the show is to build a, a really true friendship with and learn from, because I know that there's skills and knowledge and things that I can learn from. And when you come from that point of view like i said it's so much easier like i said to okay hey laren i'm i have this idea what do you think about it not having an issue with shooting it over to you and you expect right. me expecting a response back because i built a friendship with you to get an honest critique from and so having those really personable relationships with people really does go a long way i feel yeah, it does, and 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 also this industry is so small. Yeah, you're you're yeah. literally, and and I used to say three. It's like you're you're one or two people away from my like contact. You know, it's, and and in my sphere, it's like I'm like one person away. It's one like, person oh, away from a contact. And, and because of that, you know, the referrals, the introductions, the the uh, even your reputation. You know, it's like if you work well and you you are a cool person. Yeah. And your artwork, that's what's great about artwork. It's like your artwork, it's the visual. It's like sometimes people see your artwork before they see you. And it's like your, your artwork can open doors to where they're like, wow, who did this? Yeah. Or yeah. even if your name is attached to the artwork, they may not necessarily know you, but they can associate the artwork to you. Yeah. And and, and like I said, this industry, it's like, man, just, yeah. you know, you have to do your work. You have, you have to work. You have to hustle. You have to be realistic with yourself as a as an artist to say, hey, do I have what it takes? You know, don't don't listen to haters. You know, listen to yeah. the inner self. You know, the the person that really knows you and knows your discipline and knows your skill set and what you are able to produce and what you're able to produce once you learn even more. You know, yeah. listen to that person and then just go for it if you feel like you're that person. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's funny, uh, Miss Miss J. Like I said, if 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 you guys missed Deborah Anderson's uh, Black Woman Animators podcast uh, earlier this morning, I would highly suggest you go and view the replay on YouTube. Uh, J. Uh, J. Aaron Merchant, uh, Andre Rodriguez, and uh, J. C. Berry were on it. It was an amazing show. They had an amazing. I always love those guys because they're just raw and uncut. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to have them back. I like I like people like that. I, I was telling them I'm thinking about doing like a color emotions after hours where it's a little <laughs> more like I said raw and uncut. Those those three would definitely be on it for sure. Um, but um, it's funny that she said uh, they need to be connected with you, Larry. <laughs> I had one person. 
reach out to me this week, uh, and she would say, uh, "You think you can get me Laren's information?" And I was, and I said back, "You need to check out the show. Come on, you know, come check out yeah, the broadcast. I, I, Ask him questions. I you'll so you'll learn. You know, build a relationship with him. You'll learn something. You may connect with him, and that's how you do it. I think, like you said, if you go into it really honestly." you know, wanting to learn, wanting to build a true friendship as opposed to you just getting something out of it, then, you know, it'll go much, much further, I think. Yeah, and then, too, also, like, it's one of those things, you know, when you know a person and you have a relationship with them, there's there's even a plus to when you're working. It's that you... A, you have these things where you kind of know how a person thinks, so <laughs> it's like... When you're working on an art project, it's kind of like, oh, I, oh, I already know what you're thinking right now. So I'm, I, I've already done that because I already know where you're going with this. Or, or if you're working on a project, it just makes it so much better. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, I was working at Six Point Harness with a crew, and you know, we 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 all jailed, and we, I mean, there's so much, there was so much synergy with that crew is that we're, we're friends to this day, you know, even though we're all at various yeah. studios, we're yeah. like, like there was a bond, you know, there was a bond working on the project and, you know, getting to know one another, going out to lunch together and uh, uh, just talking about stuff that's not even art, you know, yeah. personal stuff or just shooting the breeze or, you know, some, like some people, some, like I know some employees, they go out to movies, dinner. Like I, I used to go out to dinner a lot, you know, yeah. and, lunch and have you know just do things and and uh all those things build better relationships and especially like if you're in animation because it's all a team effort yeah and and if you're on a team where a you're either good friends with the team or you're you're cool with them you know they, they, they you work well together that's why certain projects look a certain way you yeah. know you can feel the love in it it's like yeah. Some projects may look a certain way because, oh my God, people are like, man, I hate this. <laughs> they're going to put in a minimal, minimal effort. You know, it's kind of like, okay, I can't wait for this to be over. But when you're like with a, with a cool crew, yeah. you know, it does something to where, as you know, in a great project, it's like you want it, you want it to, you want to put you all in your best. Yeah. Well, I think you said it really well. Um, and this was something that I picked up on early. It's a small industry. And yeah. like you said, your talent may open the door and get you in there, but your personality is going to keep you in there. Like I said, if you're a a-hole, they're not going to want to work with you, and it's going to get around. Like I said, and, and people <laughs> tend, like I said, that's how people tend to move from studio to studio, project to project, because they built friendships with, oh, I went to school with this person. He's really cool and talented. Let's bring him on to this studio. Or I worked with him at this studio. He did yeah. some amazing work. Great guy. Fun to work with. Let's bring him on to this. And like I said, if you have a bad personality, it's going to get around. I don't care how talented you may be. For, well, I don't only, know. Maybe you can speak to that. Well, Maybe saying, there's some a-hole talented people that are still hanging around. <laughs> well, the, the, only caveat, the only caveat to that is that um, – you got to be super good. Yeah, you got to be like you got to be like, be like a, 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 a director running something. Whereas your you you your your name outweighs your a hole. You know, you hear it all the time. It's like these Hollywood some Hollywood directors. Oh man, yeah, they're, they're it, just a nightmare to work with. Not into a good movie, you know. It's like once 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 they get to a certain status to whereas you know their oh, their artwork yeah. and their craft outweighs <laughs> their a holeness they can get away with that for some, they can get away with that stuff until until the next person comes along who who who's just as good and maybe it's not a hole i don't know but well, and the know. caveat to that people is you have to get to that level. Don't yeah. think you're going to come into, that's what I mean. Don't think you're going to come into a studio and be an a-hole and get to that level. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy, but, you know, I, I've been fortunate, even, I'll put you this way, I've been fortunate enough to be, to work with people, and, and I've actually had cool things. Even, I've even worked, quote, unquote, with the a-holes, but, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that I'll see them be a-holes to someone else, but never to me. 
ever than me because you know i i am a professional you know yeah. i i i come in I, i'm old school you know i <laughs> i'm so old school is that when i first moved out here <laughs> i went on interviews in a suit <laughs> and they're like oh no <laughs> no no my friend donovan was like no you know you don't do that out here. You, you come out here in shorts and flip flops. <laughs> doesn't matter. But, but I, 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 I try to be professional, and then I expect you to be professional. Professional, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. You know, you can be a hole all you want there, but you know, it's yeah, not gonna yeah. happen. Here. And then also, and then I never say this. I'll say it live today. But I'm also from Detroit, even though hey. Detroit. <laughs> You'll never know it working with me because I'm so, I'm so cool. But I wish Deborah, I wish Deborah was on here because she be, she be saying the same always, thing. I, Just I, you know what? It's like you know, I always keep the Detroit in my back pocket. It has cobwebs because I never had to use it, but it, it's in there. The three one three is still here, but you know. I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be the three one zero. Oh man! Like I said, Deborah, if you're watching this on the replay, you know exactly what I mean. She I was, said I the was same just thing. To a, uh, I, have a, I have a friend. Uh, uh, her name is uh, Denitra Hall. She's, uh -huh. she's, she's she's her her daughter. She's she's actually a manager, and her daughter is a, a actress who does live action and voiceover work. Okay. And uh, we were just talking about that because we're both from Detroit and. You know, she's a mom slash manager. Mm. So her like, you know, hey, I, I can play manager, but that's <laughs> me. If there's something going down with my kid, that three one three the three one three five It's like that's that's what people don't understand. And and I've been fortunate enough for it never to come. It's like <laughs> that's in my back pocket. <laughs> What, what was it? What, what was it? Was it American Express back in the day? Never leave home without Never it. Never leave home without it, baby. Like I said, you can you can take the the guy out of Michigan, but you can't take the Michigan out of the uh, guy. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, the, the old Bill Bixby Hulk. It's like you don't want to see me angry. Please don't make me angry. Please don't make me angry. It's something about the Motor City and that it's just like, that I'm, whole I'm, area. I'm <laughs> oh man, oh, uh, Larry, you've done like I said, you've done a, you know, played a lot of different roles, or you know, been in a lot of different positions, illustrator, um, animator, doing a lot of different things. Is there one that you enjoy? Like I said, you started out in illustration. Is there one you enjoy more than the other? Do you enjoy illustrating more than you do animating? Or I, I like to be honest, I like them all equally. Uh, animation is, you know, it depends on what mode I'm in. It's like, you know, telling great stories and things like that. Of course, animation is, is, is the top set because you can, you can like tell specific stories, but illustration. And even though I do, you know, I do digital art now, but for me, I love, I'm, I'm a traditional artist. You yeah. know, I love, that's why I, I really like it. It's like, I do traditional art as a day job and everything else, but I mean, digital art. And if I continue to do that, it's like, man, it's the passion will will kind of run out a little bit because I have to paint, I have to draw yeah. a sketch pad and I have to like do like uh, I go out sketching with uh, my friend Mindy Lee and uh, Saw sometimes. Yeah. And it's just refreshing to to like be outdoors, fresh air, sketching, you know, doing doodles and here yeah. and there with traditional mediums. Uh, that was uh, and I tell people, it's like, if I wasn't in the industry, I'll still be doing what I'm, I'll still be doing it. It's like, yeah. what was the thing that, that you love to do or that, that made you passionate about yeah. it? And it was just going out drawing, just reading comic books or watching certain movies and doing my doodles of that. You know, now we call it fan art. You yeah. know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, those were the things that I, that I did. And, and uh, for me, traditional and digital or animation and illustration, I, I like them both equally yeah 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 and we're getting ready to take a look at uh some of larry's you know traditional 2d artwork here um obviously uh like i said with what you do is a 2d style um is that i mean have you dabbled in 3d or do you just 
because of your illustration background, you just love 2D and 2D animation. I, love, I, love 2D. I haven't dabbled in 3D. Uh, I would like to do 3D, maybe, but you know, it's just so much stuff I wanted to learn for 2D. And it's like like the first the first uh, piece of art that you showed. It's yeah. like I didn't haven't really talked. I've been talking about my 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 day job, but it's like these are my own yeah uh, IPs that I'm working on. You know, on the side, you know, it's been on the shelf, but I'm still cranking at it. It's that I uh, I have my own animation s- stories and things that I want to do. Yeah. And one of the cool things is that you know I you know I design, I animate, and can do all this stuff. So uh, I'm constantly grinding after hours <laughs> trying to get this stuff out as well and you know various ages i have preschool shows adult animated shows you know and in and, and in between uh a lot of a lot of them will be kickstarted you know to get funding uh some of them you know if i can do it without kickstarting i would do it like that but some of the ones that are real involved to whereas i need help from my industry players and yeah, other people yeah. come in those would most definitely would be uh, funded through Kickstarter. So, so be on the lookout for that stuff. You know, I have, I have, uh, uh, I know uh, Don. He will post the uh, the social. Yeah, the media. link will be in the show notes. Uh, like I said, his studio is Gumbo Yo, um, yeah. and these are some of the titles uh, under Gumbo Yo. Um, like I said, I like I like where Pastor Pat Exorcist is going. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that one's kind of funny. Be, that's the adult humor one, and that one's gonna be. Uh, uh, heavy, a lot of, I'm happy that that one's getting re- great responses from adults because yeah. that's my target audience. And it's, it's gonna, uh, how can I, the only thing I could say it's gonna, the humor is similar to, uh, Shaun of the Dead, you know, mm. where yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there's a horror element to it with, with a little bit of quirky humor and things quirky like humor. that. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so that one is going to be great. And, uh, it's, uh, I know some studios don't like it cause they say, oh, it's the monster of the week type thing, but that's that's what's going. Each episode is a new adventure of where this guy goes to perform his uh, duties as an exorcist. Oh man, look! It, like I said, it just looks like it would be a fun show. And you seem to, like I said, not tie yourself down to say just children's animation or just you know a certain demographic or age animation. You seem to enjoy the adult yeah. animation just as much as you enjoy doing you know the animation for you know more younger crowd as well yeah it's 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 you know it's like like it's it's the little kid in me and the adult it's like you know i mentioned earlier it's like growing up i used to watch lots of cartoons uh one of the main one of the things i used to watch a lot too is i used to watch a lot of pbs mm. things yeah like Sesame Street, electric company uh, yeah. mr rogers and some of the other and i used to love some of the little animation segments that they would have on there that were you know, instructional things yeah. to teach children. And that's where the Daryl Harrell comes from. You know, that's a whole, to be honest, that will actually fit well on a PBS <laughs> station or like uh, Disney Jr. or Nick Jr. It's 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 an engaging, fun way, hopefully, to uh, teach children how to work together and problem solve. Mm, yeah, yeah. I used to um, love Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. yeah Schoolhouse was, Rock was a big one for me. You know, you just... Yeah. And it showed me the power of what animation could do in just teaching you something, you know. How and Bill becomes the law. That that's that's the that's the famous one. Yeah. Oh and yeah. He's a, I think he's everybody a, knows. I'm just the Bill. <laughs> the no capital. Yeah. That right there. Oh man. <laughs> um, my favorite one, though, I had to say my favorite one was Verb. The Verb. Oh. I say that, that was my favorite because it was a black character in it. That's why I love yeah. it. It's just you know, it's just such yeah, an action packed you know, one. This way. My favorite one was Verb. My favorite song was "I Got Sick." <laughs> <laughs> that was funky, man. Or Actually, conjunction what? function. What's your yeah. fun? Like I can say I can just go on. I'm dating myself, yeah. people, but hey. Oh, oh, we're, we're both dating ourselves. Uh, what yeah, can I say? Like, Work that 2D animation uh, like I said, just amazing work. Um, and it shows your your style of how you flesh out a character. Uh, I love, I always love character sheets um, and that. But uh, like I said, you can get a great feel for Laren's style and his hair. For <laughs> what you love. It all. <laughs> but see, I like that because. That was something, you know, and I've talked to some, uh, like, people in the animation, you know, they they strictly kind of stick to 
children's because that's what they love. Um, you know, even though they may watch, you know, more adult style, but that was something I thought about because I love just, I love the whole gamut of it. I love just the simplicity of, Hey, I grew up on Charlie Brown and peanuts. So I love yeah. that. But I also love Akira. I also love, you know, really cerebral adult style animations that really, you know, get you to thinking or really, you know, maybe not get you to thinking, but just more adult style animation. So, you know, that's, I love the fact that you, like I said, don't limit yourself to one thing or another. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's like I said, all, all of everything you've shown is me growing up as an artist. In my influences, you know, I talked about the Sima and and, uh, and I wanted to do movie posters. That was like Drew Struzan was my. <laughs> oh yeah, I love and, his posters. Yeah, he was an awesome illustrator back. You know, yeah. I'm sure. He, I don't know if he's still around or not, but oh, he's, he, he's still doing he, it. Yeah, he did it. Like I said, all the movie posters, like Police Academy, all those yeah. ones. He's like I said, just a fantastic illustrator, movie poster now. And then also as well. I would say that one of the things that kind of pushed me to, to, to do all this stuff as well is because, you know, I had to pay bills yeah. and, 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 um, and, and uh, working at advertising agencies is that every job or commercial houses, every job was a new style. You know, like my, my foot in the door of animation was working at commercial houses. It wasn't like I was working on the, I didn't start off working on a series where it's a style and I worked on, you know, 12, you know, 20 episodes and, you know, now yeah. I go another show. It's like, no, I was working at a commercial house and, you know, they'll have a style for this one commercial that maybe be about a few months. Then the next commercial that comes up. Okay. Hey, they'll bring in a whole new crew yeah. to work on that particular commercial. But I realized early at a young age is that, Hey, if I knew that style, then I can, I could still be part of that crew, you know, because because that's what commercial houses would do. It's like whatever job they got in, they would bring in a crew that can work on that job. Yeah. So my my goal was to say, OK, if I can be as flexible and do as many styles as possible, then I can continue to have more work, you know, and then starting off as a young artist, <clears throat> you know, I always thought that the more flexible I was, the, the greater chances of me getting in. You know, some people will say, like I've heard, I've heard recruiters say, "Oh no, you know, because our industry is job specific. Yeah. You need to show what you need to do." Um, I think there's a lot of truth to that, but also from my experience, what's helped me is because I'm able to do everything. And I will also mention as well as that, make sure you put it in. There, if you can do a lot of various things, make sure they're all at the same level. That's all I can say. It's like yeah. if you can do other stuff, keep it at the same level. If one thing pops out more than the other, then maybe you might want to put the other one back until that that's still at the same level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and I love art, you know. <laughs> I love to, and all this stuff is traditional painting. So I will take these jobs just so I can have a job that, I, that I'm actually working with paints and working on like yeah, yeah. actual boards, get my hands. I Like one of the things I, I would tell people, I'm a messy painter. <laughs> like when I paint on things, my hands, I have paint on them. My, my my board like uh well the board the the board that i have my illustration board on and we all paint all on it it's like i love that stuff you know it's like yeah. like a cook in the kitchen that just likes to yeah I, i'm a messy cook but then when the cooks when when i'm done <laughs> it looks good it, yeah. <laughs> and that's good like i said that um which you know kind of answers one of the other questions i had was how do you keep improving your skills is that you just still do the traditional drawing, the painting, all the stuff that just keeps your creativity flowing. And then also I would say for me is that taking professional jobs with a deadline. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, I guarantee it's like before I really started having lots of professional work, like I said, I would, I would do these things on my own. I would, you know, take summer vacations to learn this stuff. But when I took jobs, they were like, Hey, this thing is doing two weeks. That forces me to make quick decisions and, mm, and, and yeah. like, okay, I can't noodle this. Yeah, yeah. I want this I'm looking at these illustrations. Like, man, I wish, yeah, certain things I'm looking at certain things. Now it's like, man, I would, I would definitely, <laughs> thank you, but 
I had like all I, this was part of a trading card series, and mm-hmm. I had to, I had to paint, yeah. paint like pretty much half the the trading card set. You know, and it's like okay, you got your deadline. You, you know, I got to get a painting done within three days, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like move on to the next one and, and make those really quick- causes you to focus and like you said, kind of really hone in on the things that you need to be doing yeah. and focusing on for sure. Um, I tell you. And again, like I said, everybody that's just jumping in, um, please take a ch- opportunity to you know if you catch this on the replay, check out his uh, demo reel, check out Larry's artwork. Um, amazing stuff and again all of you know the, his information is uh gonna be on then while i'm thinking about that uh gonna be on the show notes for sure so make sure you hop on over uh to the linkedin or the youtube channel and you can get all this information you can definitely uh connect with laren you know the the lady that reached out this week you, can connect with Aaron and, you know, on all his channels, you know, and, and find him and build a relationship with him. Check out more of his work. Also, like I told you, we get plugged into the Color of Motion group. He's a part of that. Um, definitely can ask questions, learn, really, if your your goal is to get your skill better, build the relationships and get some, you know, honest critique on things that you're wanting to do to get into the industry for sure. Uh, and like I said, this has um, definitely been uh, an amazing, amazing sh- show there. And, and as you can see, you know, we can, we can talk for hours and hours. I guess that's the, the Detroit two hours thing. Now, Yeah, we're, we're going up for two hours. Hold up, man. This is just take a lunch and come right back and finish that. We, we, we can do this, you know, like the... Uh, a lunch break. Are you familiar with the Twitter spaces? Like some of those Twitter spaces be going like I saw oh, yeah. something yeah. four, five, six hours. They take they literally would take a break. <laughs> like they were coming back. Play some and, music and y'all go, yeah. you know. <laughs> But yeah, it's just, you know, as you can see, man, I, I get so excited about this stuff, this yeah. talking, sharing, and, you know, and it's part of my passion. And then also maybe the instructor side is popping out, yeah. but it's yeah, meet, meeting these great people and seeing artwork. I, I get so excited. You know, people are like, man, do you, do you, I know people who get upset. It's like, man, you're so good. This, they look at other artists that are really good. It's like, man, that person's so good. I'm so jealous. I'm so angry. It's like, no, I get excited because, yeah. 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 Man, this industry is animated. <laughs> it's a team effort. It's a team sport, uh, yeah. illustration, whatever. But it yeah. just motivates me and pushes me to go forward and, and do yeah. what I have to do. And, and I tell that, and I say that a lot because it's easy. While this time is great with you know all the social media and channels, it I call it a dual edged sword. If you're not careful, you could be one of those type of people that look at people's work and let that discourage you or get you jaded or upset because your level is not at that level. Use it to, one, you never, you don't know how long that person's been practicing their skill to get to that level. And two, use it as a a motivator and an inspiration to, to inspire you that, you know, you too, if put the time in, can get your skill level to that level. Um, that's, no, it, you know, it, what it's all it, about, you know. It's easy, you know, really, and it's easy to find yourself looking at art station and just, wow, I can't do this crap. I mean, I, my skill level is just not going to be like like that. And, and trust me, like I said, I can look at, I can look at Larry's work and think that myself. I'm like, man, I don't know if I can get to do what Larry's doing, but it's, you use it as inspiration. Like I said, when I look at your work, it inspires me. And it, it, especially, like I said, seeing a black man doing it, it inspires me that I can do that. You know, put it into work and put it into effort. You know, I can get to that level if I put the dedication into it. Um, so don't let, like I said, don't let yourself fall on that side of the, the spectrum of social media and comparing yourself to somebody else because it's easy to do that. 
Yeah, yeah. That comparison thing is uh, only only do it from a constructive point, not yeah. not from a discouraging point. It's like uh, it's it's like it's use it as a goal versus <laughs> something to say, oh my god, you know, don't don't be intimidated by it. I tell you, uh, <clears throat> when I when I when I started doing like cartooning type drawings, you know, I was I I all of my I, I used to draw a lot of superheroes, even though I was into cartoons, but I really didn't really get the cartoony type job until later. Yeah. And, you know, those things, again, you know, they could be intimidating, they can be frustrating. But when you work with cool people like Bruce, yeah. <laughs> that kind of teach you as you go, or <clears throat> you have some great tutorials online and videos and, and, th- and books to look at, I mean, all those things help build you up. You yeah. know, it's like, Every artist, there's a basic principle of knowing how to draw, <laughs> you know, and once you kind of know how to draw, then everything else is just exaggeration. You know, it's like, oh, I can draw a real figure. Then I can draw a cartoon figure yeah. by teaching how I draw a real figure and exaggerating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, making things different. So so as long as you understand fundamentals of drawing, fundamentals, it's and again, it's all shapes and yeah. perspective and you know, yeah. all that basic things that you're learning uh, in art school, you know, yeah. the, the core principles. You learn that stuff Don't and learn how to see, yeah. then just take it, to, you just keep building upon yeah. and building upon and you get to that that level. Yeah, I know uh, Aaron says that, uh, Aaron Blaze says that a lot. He says, yeah. when, when you learn, I, when I learned the fundamentals of animal anatomy, then I was able to exaggerate that anatomy in cartoons and animation because I understood the the physical anatomy of an elephant. I understood the physical anatomy of a bear or a lion that allowed me to go into Disney and draw this exaggerated, you know, cartoon of the animal. So yeah, I definitely agree with you, understanding the fundamentals of, of what it is you're drawing allows you to build on that fundamental and exaggerate that fundamentals as well. For you, one, you know, like I said, this is this has just been amazing, and, and we go on and on, and definitely yeah. have to yeah, have, have part back. two sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> definitely have to have a part two, and actually, like I said, um, you know, really kind of talking with uh. uh JT Barry and a couple of other people about doing a multi-day event of yep. of having some speakers come in, um, really talking about it, doing some panel discussions and things like that. So definitely <clears throat> want to get you in for that, and you know, have you maybe even have you come back on do a drawing session, you know, an animation session. I think would be fun Absolutely. as well, um, but. This has been, like I said, so, so much fun for me, Larry, and, and such an honor for me. And I know it has been uh, great for the guests and people that have listened and are going to check out uh, the replay. Um, just <clears throat> one final question kind of before we go. Kind of what what would be your hope to inspire? Like I said, you're a teacher at heart, I think, um, and you love really teaching. But what do you hope that, the the young black child that like you were that like I was sees like when you saw Bruce Smith when you know I started seeing people of color really in the industry what do you hope to be in as an inspiration for that younger black child that's just starting drawing well you know it's something similar it's like you know you just <clears throat> To put a face to a piece of artwork, you know, you 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 have you you always see the final product. You always see the final designs or the final animation. But you know, there there are lots of people that are involved in the process, and to put a face behind it is actually good, you know, because you know when people see themselves and in, in, in these these aspects, uh, it is, you know, it's, it, it motivates you. It gets it motivated me when I saw Bruce and other people. So yeah. so to do that, and then also, you know. Uh, you know, I, I didn't mention it, but uh, I didn't want to mention it, but I am going to mention it. Mention it. I, you know, even even some of the things that I'm working on outside of like the Disney thing is that I'm purposely working on some things to bring in 
folks who possibly might not be able to get that chance and then yeah. you know, or, or or maybe it's like a stepping stone maybe yeah. it's like hey you do this and then boom use that and 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 you know I'm, I'm, I'm working and doing the kinks out but it's one of those things where if it's done right and properly it will actually be pretty cool it would be, yeah. be pretty cool like some of the talent that's out there that's like oh man i've been doing abcde i just can't get in that this would be something that could possibly help you know help with that process yeah. and then you actually have something tangible to show that hey yeah I have experience. I have this, you know, a lot of those jobs like, oh, we need somebody with A, B, C, D yeah. experience. Well, I'm trying to work on something outside of even, you know, outside of the projects that I do have, but work on some other projects that will be geared towards helping yeah. young artists get that point. And also, you know, get paid and, and, and know a little bit of the industry yeah. and things like that. Because I've always wanted to do something like, uh, it's me and I have some other friends to, uh, my brothers from Detroit, who are also artists, we're all out here, but we always had this vision that we wanted to do things to where it's, it's a company that we do artwork, but then there's also a teaching section. Mm. You know, that's what I really liked about like the old Warner Brothers, yeah, the old like old school Warner Brothers uh, that did the the, uh, the shorts before yeah. the movie is that they were a studio that allowed their employees to grow to where they learned and they, they had teaching sessions and there were things so that every artist or at least some of the, the, the most of the artists there grew to a level of perfection you know yeah. so yeah so yeah. you know my my, my, my friends and i you know we're, we're we also want to do something where yeah you're working on a cool project but then there's a moment where okay instead of us working on the job today that is teaching session it's yeah. it's we're we're going to pass as my friend frank said we're going to spread the wealth and 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 teach you some things and, and, and help you to grow even more you know as an artist and animator and illustrator so that you know this continues it's, it's a revolving site it continues to grow continues to build upon so uh uh i haven't fully, i haven't officially announced it yet but that's you know it's something uh that, that I'm working on. And it'll be pretty cool. It'll be something that won't be too complex because I'm trying to make it so that people who are helping out with us, it's something that you can learn fast, but it won't be something that will be time consuming. You know, you get, you, you get, you get, it's kind of like, you know, I'm not going to say too much more, but I'll wait till I fully do yeah, it in yeah, the yeah. official announcement. But that's one of the things that I'm doing as well to like give back and to help out with this community um, and I'm also sharing jobs, you know, yeah. on, on the uh, Black Animators Facebook page and the Black and Animated Facebook page. I'm always yeah. sharing job openings because the studios are hiring. <laughs> Every week there are like tons of work. And I understand, you know, you have to have a certain skill level, but the jobs are out there. You know, if you're at that, if you feel like you're there and your skills are, are tight, um, there's actual work in the industry if that's your, if that's, you know, your, your path of where you want to go. Yeah. Um, so I do that and then I, I share, I talk to people, you know, you email me if I have time, I will reply and give you some, some advice. Or like I said, you know, point you to videos and things like that. But, um, it's, it's good. It's a good time. You know, it's yeah. a good time. There's technology and everything's lining up for, for us, you know, black folks and people. Yeah. Of color. yeah, yeah. And I think share their stories, you know, and I think that along with, like I said, just, more people, like I said, such as yourself, really going back to say the younger grades and going in and speaking and really having programs to expose. Like I said, I think about, you know, when I was going through um, like grade school and that, you know, they had art programs, but, you know, think how much more um, it would, powerful it would be if, you know, animators or people came back to the you know the schools especially underrepresented schools that didn't have the access to a lot of studios just coming back and speaking about the industry and how to get into the industry and just really exposing us that it's a possibility and something that's out there if you want to get to it so that's you know something that i definitely look to like i said do myself have and, and hope that you know other artists and I know other artists and creators are doing that as well going back to grade schools and really exposing the younger kids um, that you know it's something that's out there and that would be something that they can get into Miss Jay yeah. put you in coach yeah for sure <laughs> Jay like I said Jay's another one um, definitely uh, 
you know, looking to do, like I said, a really good event um, that really brings in a lot of the, the, the talent of color and really expose um, others and younger kids uh, of just the super amazing talent that's out there and the knowledge that you and others have to share and, and really give out. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, um, Aaron, I can't say enough, just, you know, the fact that we connected and built this friendship. Um, I enjoy, you know, the work that you do. I enjoy following you and just so thankful, one, that you agreed to be on the show. Uh, Bruce, I'm, I've been reaching out, you know, I'm going to be reaching out to you. I want to, I did have him, I do have him on my list and I reached out to him a couple of times. I know you're a busy man, but definitely want to have you now that I got, you know, man, he might put in a little word there, but I definitely want to have Bruce on, uh, to, you know, and like I said, talent like that, that just really exposes and shows just the type of creators that are out there. Like I said, how awesome is that? that you see somebody on a behind the scenes and then later on in life, you're working with them. That's, you know, that's just yeah. something that you just wouldn't dream of unless somebody tells you, you know, how awesome. And, and I referenced, uh, you know, um, Deborah's uh, show earlier, uh, Andre, and he was on here earlier. How inspiring is that Andre picked up animation while he was in prison? It's an inspiring story to, to share with people the journey that you go on to learn and get to a place of doing what you enjoy doing. And I think that's those are the stories that I enjoy telling, that I enjoy myself learning about and really inspiring me. You know, that's what really inspires me. People such as Joshua Leonard, who just recently, congratulations, Joshua, for working at Disney. But Part of the I, you know, I, like I said, he worked, it was holding down a full time job at Home Depot while he was doing everything. And I was like, I feel like I'm not doing any, you know, how hard am I work? That, that type of stuff and those type of stories are the things that, like I said, really inspire not only me but i know inspires other young people because they see the passion that people have the journey that people have to go like you said like you were talking about earlier you sacrifice something to get this dream that you want what is it that you're willing to sacrifice you know right yeah to get it's this dream that you want and those are the stories that i enjoy telling are the sacrifices and the journeys that people make, especially people that look like us, that we make to get to this dream of, the, of what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a journey, but it's a fun journey. You know, yeah. it's, it's a journey that pays off. You know, if you if you're if you're persistent and uh, just just continue to just again think of it as levels, like one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. Um, and one thing is you learn to draw by drawing, you know, it's like the more you draw, the better you get, you know, it's, it, it's don't, 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 don't put yourself down. You know, it's, 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 a learning process. it's like, sometimes you have to do 10 bad drawings to get that one good drawing or yeah. 20 bad drawings to get the one good drawing. You know, I still do it in what I, in, in what I'm doing. It's like, yeah. you know, you, you look at those art books again, you know, it's 20, all you have pages and pages of all this, <laughs> all these uh, conceptual ideas that never make it to the final. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you get better. And like I said, uh, I am so, so looking forward uh, to having you back on the show. Miss uh, Tiana, I appreciate this being your uh, inaugural episode that you yeah. tuned in. I hope this uh, inspires you to, one, uh, join the Color of Motion family because, like I said, this is the type of uh, uh, interviews and people and friends that I have on um, that I hope inspire you along with others uh, for sure. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much uh, and taking the time. Uh, I know uh, Laren really appreciates it uh, for sure. I appreciate all the viewers that have tuned in each and every week and making the color of motion um, what it is. I appreciate my friends coming on 
um, and making the color of motion what it is. Definitely, uh, Laren, going to have you back on uh, hopefully later this year. Maybe along with Bruce. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. I think that would be really cool. Bruce, we got to get both of y'all on for sure. So uh, mention that to him. Like I said, I think, I think that'd be good. I think that'd be good. Uh, but again, everybody, uh, all this information uh, will be in the show notes uh, on the YouTube channel. Tiana, uh, all the books that Laren referenced uh, are going to be in the show notes as well. So like I said, I'd highly recommend you get them. They're all Bibles in animation. If, you're, if that's your thing that you're wanting to learn and just storytelling, uh, definitely would highly recommend them. Uh, again, uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in each and every week uh, for sure. Laren, uh, if you could hang out for just one second in the green room while I close out the show, uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, but everybody, please, again, help me uh, thank my very special guest and friend, uh, Laren Dijonet, for being on, being such an amazing guest, sharing such amazing wisdom. Thank you. Okay. Guys and gals, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I've enjoyed doing it for sure. Uh, Leontine, I appreciate that. Such an informative, engaging episode. Thank you. I uh, couldn't have done it without my friend uh, Laren coming on and making it that way for sure. Uh, so I appreciate the fact that hopefully all of you have enjoyed it. Tana, thank you. Uh, for tuning in that's your first time out like i said i hope you will not be a stranger coming back uh make sure that uh like i said you get plugged into the community because it's a fun engaging community uh for sure that i definitely want you uh to be a part of again everybody this has been as always, an amazing episode. I've had so much fun and a blast, and me and Larry could have kept going on and on and on and on and on. But I know you're not going to sit for a six or seven hour you know, episode. We probably should have done like a lunch break and came back. I may try that one time. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, but uh, like I said, you definitely have to have a guest like Larry that just enjoys talking about the craft and the industry uh, for sure. Again, uh, everybody, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, it's been a fun episode. Make sure that uh, you tune in next week because, like I said, season two is just rolling along and we got some more special guests lined up for sure. And next week is going to be no exception. We got our Dr. Tshepo and Kabalo uh, Maka, mother and daughter team out of Africa that have Cablo Animation Studios. Uh, and they do some amazing medical animations as well. So looking forward to having them on the show to talk about Cablo Animation Studios for sure. Um, man, like I said, this has just been a fun episode. Make sure, again, you get plugged into the giveaway as you saw by... Um, Baron's demo reel, what you can create with Toon Boom, given some time and talent, you can create some amazing stuff. So get into the giveaway. We're giving away some amazing software from our brand new partner, Toon Boom Animations. Uh, get plugged into the community. Make sure that you become a part of it and get engaged. Um, what else? Like I said, just so much stuff going on. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Cheers, everyone. And have a great and safe 4th of July holiday weekend. Cheers. <laughs>